Welcome to Scientists on the Spot of Cardiovascular Research on Life and the Scientists of Tomorrow. My name is Niels Vogt from Göttingen and I have with me today one of the leading scientists in arrhythmia research, Professor Stan Nattel from Montreal Heart Institute. Dr. Thank Nattel, welcome and thank you for taking this interview. Uh, thank you very much, Niels. It's truly a pleasure to be here. To begin with, um, why are you so passionate about atria and atrial fibrillation? Well, my interest in atrial fibrillation goes back to about the late 1980s, early 1990s, when I realized that relatively little was known about the atria and that atrial fibrillation was clinically an extremely important arrhythmia. Uh, a lot of electrophysiology research was done in the late 1980s with the advent of the patch clamp technique, and there was a lot that was understood about the ventricles because of the dramatic nature of ventricular arrhythmias and the importance of sudden cardiac death. But I realized that the atria were somehow being ignored in contrast with the enormous importance of the arrhythmia atrial fibrillation that I saw clinically. So that started my interest in atrial fibrillation and I found it a very fascinating area. Um, the atria themselves are very interesting. They have a complex function and a complex structure, and the mechanisms of atrial arrhythmias are very interesting and poorly understood. And uh, it's also quite a, a challenge clinically. So that combination of being understudied, a very important clinical problem, and having complex and very interesting mechanisms were what, piqued, what was what piqued my interest. Coming to the therapy, what do you think is the future of AF therapy? Tablets, ablation, or maybe devices? Well, I think that ablation is here to stay. It's very important and reasonably successful. However, it's not a cure, and I don't think it will ever be a cure. Um, but it, it will be probably the single most important part of the armamentarium, especially for patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. Medications are essential, anticoagulants to prevent stroke, which mm -hmm. as we all know is the most important complication of atrial fibrillation. Drugs to control the ventricular rate will always be important. And then the big question mark is antiarrhythmic drugs. They are widely used, probably will continue to be essential, but as you know our the drugs available to us are very old and it's difficult to introduce new drugs for a variety of reasons. One being the potential risk, a second being the financial risk. So the first clinical risk but then financial risk which has made many developers shy of developing new antiarrhythmic drugs. Perhaps this will change someday. We certainly could use new antiarrhythmic drugs that are more effective and successful, but that remains to be seen. Then a whole new class of therapeutics, both drug-based and lifestyle-based, that are, is important for preventing the remodeling that in the long term is a major issue for all sorts of atrial fibrillation and complicates therapy. So recurrences after ablation are a problem, Many of these in the longer term are due to remodeling that may be amenable to prevention. And then primary prevention of atrial fibrillation. It's been shown that intervening at the level of the risk factors for atrial fibrillation like sleep apnea, obesity, cigarette smoking, and so on can be effective in preventing occurrences and that clearly is the most logical way to prevent at least a significant proportion of the atrial fibrillation that we see. As far as devices are concerned, left atrial appendage occlusion may probably will continue to develop mm -hmm. and someday may be more widely used uh, either as a complement to or to replace anticoagulation in many patients. So far pacemakers are an essential part of management for patients who have conduction abnormalities. Uh, their value in preventing atrial fibrillation is limited at the moment, but future developments may make them more widely used. And then finally, the notion of atrial defibrillators was developed for quite a while in around 
10 to 20 years ago, and it may yet come back with low energy defibrillation that's not painful. So, you know, it's always very hard to know what might be the future of therapeutics 10 to 20 years from now, but based on present trends, I would say ablation will continue to be very important, anticoagulant drugs, rate control drugs, antiarrhythmics to a somewhat lesser extent, prevention measures, and left atrial appendage occlusion for probably still a quite a selected population. Dr. Nattel, you are one of the leading scientists in arrhythmia research and also an outstanding uh, clinician. Many young MDs find it difficult to meet both challenges. What recommendations do you have on this? Well, I think first of all, it's crucial for anyone, whatever they're doing, to do it well. So half-hearted measures are not good. If someone wants to do clinical medicine and combine it with scientific research, they have to make sure to be well skilled in both areas and to practice both areas at a very good level. A second point that I think is increasingly critical is the importance of collaboration and relying mm -hmm. on colleagues. Basic research is increasingly complex, technical, and requires great training and skills and so I don't think it's realistic for someone to be a, f a close to full-time researcher and to practice extensively and do it all on their own. They really need the collaboration of expert peers and colleagues who can complement their skills and, uh, and help them. And uh, very important also I guess to realize that Times change, interests change, and be flexible enough to uh, to shift as one's ability to work changes in a given area, and make sure again to maintain excellence and competitivity. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Natel, please allow me a personal question. You are an observant Jewish Jew. Uh, how do your ethical and religious convictions influence your scientific work? Um, I think they influence it subtly, but to a significant extent. So there are a variety of teachings of different religions, particularly the Jewish one that I practice, that are very important in medicine and science. So the first is honesty. Mm -hmm. um, there's a saying in Judaism that God's seal is truth, and so one has to strive always for uh, intellectual honesty and honest, honesty with oneself and one's mm -hmm. colleagues. The second is respect. You know, we believe that all human beings are created in God's image and therefore we have an absolute obligation to respect other humans and to treat them in a kind and sympathetic way and that applies certainly to patients but it also applies to colleagues co-workers and others that one runs across. Um, and I guess finally the importance of the mission. You know, medical research is not simply a curiosity, it's something that must ultimately be for the sake of improving treatment of human beings, management of human beings, and the understanding of science and human life which we feel somehow has an ultimate truth that derives from God. And so all of it is kind of a package that um, relates to the importance of humanity and the importance of truth and decency and, uh, and honesty in what we do. Dr. Natel, you reached many milestones during your career. What do you think is the next milestone for you to conquer? Um, I feel that at this point in my career, the most important thing that I can do is to work with junior colleagues and other perhaps younger scientists and try to transfer some of the uh, knowledge and wisdom that I've, I've acquired over the years. I have the benefit of having lived through and seen a lot of developments in medicine and in science and maybe through making mistakes 
learned how a little bit how to avoid making them and how to deal with them when one does. It's inevitable in life to make mistakes sometimes. It's not possible to avoid them completely, but what is possible is to learn how to deal with them and grow in response to them. So again, at this stage, I think the most important thing that I can do is try to help to transfer some of what I've acquired over the years to future scientists and physicians. Dr. Natel, thank you very much for taking this interview and all these personal insights. On behalf of Cardiovascular Research on Life and the Scientists of Tomorrow, I would like to thank you for watching this podcast. Mm -hmm.